Pop, 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 persuadable. What's going on, boo boos? All right, I got a quick dad joke. Not everybody thinks Cleopatra is beautiful, but that's how Julius Caesar. <laughs> so that's so fucking stupid. <laughs> Anyways, I am going to make the official argument that if you have bad ping or if you are a solo cure, you should be using Magician. So that essentially is what this video is about. Uh, I do go in depth a little bit and I try to show some gameplay as to why. And the good thing about this video is that it's also going to demonstrate different skill levels, different knowledge levels. Um, trying to make that a little bit better with these guides and with this sort of content where it doesn't only encompass high tier uh, gameplay. And that's really big for me because traditionally I've always made these guides and it's always just been from a high tier perspective. And I'm trying to encompass other aspects to characters that does exist in lower tiers because it's relevant. And not only high tiers run this game. So, had to learn that. <laughs> it used to be hard though as a high tier because I didn't play low tier. So, I didn't know. Alright, we're going to get into it. So, the first thing, the first reason why I use Magician is because of the aggressive gameplay. So, what does that mean? That means that I don't give a fuck what cipher it is. I'm going to go on it. Right? Now, you can also play more conservative which would be more of a high tier strategy where once you get into the high tiers maybe you're not the one that wants to put yourself in a bad position and what i mean by that is that they're safe ciphers and unsafe ciphers this is technically an unsafe cipher because the hunter usually goes there so like as a mind's eye you don't want to go here but the thing is is that with magician because he's such an excellent kiter and because he has such transitional skills that are remarkable you're allowed to be in this sort of position, especially in these lower tiers, because I'm solo leveling. So I'm the one that's trying to bring my milkshake to the yard to get these hunters' attention, right? Because I want I want a kite. And it's not atypical for a lot of hunters to kind of go against you until their teleport comes up and says, ah, fuck this, I don't want to deal with it anymore, all right? So that's a very important point so typically there's no transitional kite when i'm using magician you can transitional kite with magician when you're in the higher tiers because you don't want to be caught off guard right like if i know a hunter is going to come to me in high tiers i might transitional kite knowing that they know where i'm going and i'm going to put myself in a more favorable favorable position with this don't do it i just i don't care if, I, if i'm in a bad position i will purposely do it to get your attention now i can't do this strategy with a lot of the other survivors i mean i could but a lot of the times the hunters may either ignore me or they won't engage with me think of your first officers think of your forwards think of your mercenaries right so as a player i want to put myself in a bad position sometimes to get these hunters to engage with me but i need the skill set as well as the the build of the character to get me out of those sticky situations and i feel magician does that very very well and again because i don't have a decode and debuff and because i'm not a rescuer in nature hunters are more likely to engage with me so you see here like this is a really dangerous cipher in the beginning of the game especially when you're going against a Wu Chang, which i'm going to get into in a little bit and because of the character makeup of magician it allows me to run these sort of weird routes so aggressive play style mixed in with the ability for excellent kite potential based on that character's makeup and that's a very very important point as to why i use magician um Here's an example of, as to why I also love Magician. You pretty much are immune to jump scares. Think of your uh, Wu Chang that teleports like this. There's a fucking fantastic umbrella. Fantastic umbrella. And if I was a mind's eye, there's nothing I would have been able to do there. That's a very dangerous cipher for jump scares. A lot of Wu Changs love to go on that cipher. So that's why I like Magician so much because when you do have these hunters that teleport on you when you do have these hunters 
uh, that jump scare you, like let's say a follower of Dream Witch, his kit allows you to get the hell out of the way. Whereas like a perfumer, for example, although technically you have the ability to, good hunters can mind game you out of your perfume. Now, what I really like about Magician as well, and this is a very important point. Now, this is gonna, this this is important for myself and for other players, is that I can make up kite routes with this character. That's really fucking big. So, whereas other characters have certain routes that they can use, a Magician can use the map completely differently. A Magician is very forgiven for your kite and potential and very forgiven for your mistakes. That's why I like Magician. So if you're a newer player and you're not too familiar with the map or you're not completely familiar with Chitin routes, that's why I like using Magician because Magician, you can use your ability in the wide open. And of course, good hunters may be able to mind game you, but you may be able to mind game them. And so that's where I look at Magician as completely different. It's a very forgiving character for bad routes, unfamiliar hunters, which I'm also going to get into in a second. All right. And that's what this hunter right here does a fucking fantastic job. Stuns me. But I can use this part of the map way better as a magician with no resources than what I could as a perfumer or what I could with many other survivors. So that's where I think magician separates himself from a lot of other survivors. I can mess up routes, like I said. I can go against hunters that I'm not too familiar with. I can use various parts of the map. Look at that blink prediction that I'm able to do even when I'm... Uh, well, I, I have a little sliver of health gone, okay? So, that's where my argument with Magician separates himself. And especially with the aggressive play style, this is what makes his kit very dangerous, uh, in my opinion, of course. And so, again, this video is just showing why I use Magician in solo. Now, here is a good example of me completely fucking up. I'm not too familiar with wax artists. I don't have a crazy amount of experience against wax artists. And so I panic. This is a complete panic kite. And I don't know how to use the environment to my advantage because of the wax shit. I have no fucking clue what I'm doing. I am only alive because I'm playing Magician. And so this is where you're going to get more of a lower tier perspective or a newer player perspective where it's like, all right. Wax Artist wasn't really used when I left. There may have been some adjustments. People are using them, and I need to learn. And this kit is allowing me to transition and kite in a way that a lot of other survivors would not allow me to do. Now, mind you, I'm not using... Uh, I'm thankful this character isn't using Blink. I'm not using a 9-3 build right now. I'm actually using the, the flywheel effect. So if... It's a newer player. You might as well use a 9-3 build. You can experiment with the 12-3 build. You know, if I had a 9-3 build, I think that would have helped me more in this situation. And right now, I'm just like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to choose to die, and I'm just going to keep breaking line of sight. I can see that basement's not over here, and so I'm just trying to buy as much time as I can. Now, if I was a different survivor, I would have died a lot faster. I would not have been able to transition like this. My transition in here was garbage. It was hot garbage. I'm in the wide open allowing a wax artist to hit me, but because it's a magician, it allowed me to get away with that. And so I think that's a very, very important point with Magician. And so here is another big point about Magician. You can absolutely break ankles. Now, you may not be breaking ankles as much in the higher tiers, right? Because a lot of those high tier hunters are fucking fantastic. They know what they're doing. Again, aggressive play style, caught off guard. This is what I do with Magician. So I'm never really kiting in favorable circumstances. I'm always kiting in a way where most of the time I'm trying to seek their attention. We talked about this. And this is another panic kite. I'm not really doing too well, but his kit is allowing me to work and navigate the map in a way that a lot of other survivors would not allow me to do so when we get into the concept of breaking ankles the world doesn't revolve around just the high tier hunters there are a lot of low to mid tier hunters who will get confused by your illusions and you can break ankles and that's a really big point i'm going to blur that out for their namesake i'm kind of getting tired of blurring names out it takes too much time all right so this is where magician is also used in a way where you know, you can play aggressive, you can prevent the jump scares, all right? You have excellent kite potential with trash routes. We're seeing all that, right? See how all this is organized and it's all coming together, all right? 
But what's really good about that is that I can break ankles like I just did. Now, the biggest thing with solo queue, okay, is your ability to escape. I can't tell you right now, the majority of my matches, people are dying in like 30 seconds, okay? It's going to happen. It comes with the territory, lower tiers, and survivors are learning, okay? So one of the things that I've had to learn is really the art of escaping. And this is more than just the character, all right? Because if I can escape solo, I can still gain four or five points. Look at the ping up there. See that ping? This is Southeast Asia. I'm ranking on both Southeast Asia and NAEU, and that's why I like Magician because of that red ping. I can use him very favorably even in red ping, but let's stay on topic here. His escape and potential is really high because of his kit. You can see that I'm a one-shot kill, and I can use my Illusion Wand if I use it just correctly to time this and to escape. All right? Now, the escape, and I do want to talk about this a little bit more. Um... With the escaping routes with the Magician, um, it takes a lot of time to understand and to read the situation of the game correctly when you know that your teammates are dying and there's fucking nothing that you can do. And at some point, you have to start setting yourself up for a solo escape, especially if a hunter leaves you early game or especially if you're the last one alive, you have to really set yourself up where you're in close proximity to a cipher so you can touch it and you don't get crows, but also at the same time, you're able to be away from them in case of a teleport and you're trying to avoid tinnitus at the same time. I would say that as a magician, my mic cut out, I would say as a magician, your escape potential is extremely high, as demonstrated with the photographer match. Not so much this match, but it's extremely high because you have a good kit. So even if a hunter teleports away from you early game, especially if you kite very well, you're, you're providing what your team needs in order to survive. And if they die in 10 seconds and the rescues get stuffed and you're in a situation where you know, you're at three ciphers, two people already dead, you need to start setting yourself up. And... What I will say is that that takes a lot of time and a lot of practice. I think a lot of Identity 5 players, what we need to start doing is stop getting so fucking frustrated. And this includes myself because I get very angry. Stop getting frustrated when your team is throwing the match. And start looking at it as how am I going to escape this match with a solo escape. It's going to be difficult. The odds are against you, but let's try. And that's when you're going to learn how to do that. And what I would say is that a Magician will allow you so much more flexibility than a lot of the other survivors and of course you know when we start talking about again mercenary first officer forward they're all great priestess they all have their own abilities but the thing is is that with magician again you're not really having any consequences to your decoding so i would say that right now i'm going up ranks because of this one thing the ability to escape and that's it just that one tiny thing most of my matches, I think yesterday, I had 10 losses. 10 losses. Not a single one was from me messing up my early game kite. I was fortunate because I do fuck up. But none of them yesterday were the case, right? And I escaped 9 out of the 10 times, right? That's an additional at least 40 points. So the ability to escape is a very, very important skill. And that's where Magician will set you up for that. And I think that that is usually not really highlighted. I cannot escape to the same potential as Perfumer. As an example, look at this film right here. I'm in the wide open. There's a lot of survivors that are not allowing you to transition in the wide open like a magician will allow you to. So this is me setting myself up poorly for the escape. But I still get away with the escape because of the magician's kit. And because of what magician's kit was allowing me to do. One last thing I want to make very well known is that because of red ping and lag i'm not really a big rescuer when i'm playing southeast asia specifically that's why i don't recommend forward and mercenary uh because a lot of people do have bad ping out there so i think magician would be the perfect uh, fit for that especially because if you're not going in for the final rescues you're not in the line of sight of the hunter so a lot of the time you'll see that your rescuers die third and then you're the last one alive for that escape and the final thing is we're gonna kind of merge it Magician's just fucking fun. But more so, he has rescue potential that I think a lot of people underestimate. 
there's a lot of things that I like about Magician in terms of rescuing. Now, some will go Tide Turner build. I think it's going to depend on how comfortable you feel. I think your ability to excel early game, to take that initial kite and to waste at least 60 to 90 seconds, even if the hunter teleports off you, is the most important factor. But then you can make the argument that if that happens, then you're kind of useless in terms of the rescue. So whether you build Tide Turner or not is your, you know, that's up to you. But make sure that you secure that early game kite. So if you need, you know, the the nine route, if you need the three route, or rather the zero route, 12 route, (laughs) fucking this all up, then that should be your priority. But if you feel confident, right? Like, I don't really need those things. I know how to kite long enough without them. There's a lot of rescue potential. And you can rescue without Tide Turner in emergency situations. I think Magician is heavily underrated in terms of the rescue. There's a lot of... uh, tricks and maneuvers that you can do using your illusion wand to at least secure the person to get off the rocket chair uh, definitively or there's situations where you're in a rocket chair that's in a heavily favored position for the hunter and the only real way to go in for the rescue is to close that open gap and what that means is to close that gap where the hunter can't really see you um Magician has a decent kit. Obviously, Mercenary would be better. Forward would be better. Uh, But on the plus side, with Magician, at least you're not really, in a way, have a decode debuff or a consequence to it. But you have to be careful with Magician. I know this isn't really a guide, but you have to be careful with how you use your Magician wands for the rescue because you may need it late game. So be, be careful just using a magician wand for no reason and then late game you need it in order to do a solo escape on the pl- on the other hand use it wisely where you can mitigate unnecessary damage because if it's late game then you're a one shot hit especially if a cypher doesn't get primed correctly which can happen ultimately i think magician is the best way to go f- for solo queuing for all of these reasons, the kite potential, having fun, the routes, not knowing hunters, breaking ankles. Thank you for watching. And number 11, I don't have footage on this, but you have crazy rocket chair escape potential. You might be like, why don't you have footage? Well, because I'm a fucking god and I don't go down ever. Never in the history of Identity 5 have I ever gone down and been put on the rocket chair. But for you lesser known magicians, people like Jogi, who go down all the time, they, <laughs> he's gonna fucking kill me. <laughs> um, I'm just kidding. Uh, the rescue potential is actually pretty high, especially in lower and mid tiers where your invisibility really can be used heavily in order to get away. So higher tiers, eh, it's still there. It takes a lot more skill. Probability goes down of it being successful, but uh, it's still there. And so I think that's a really important point is that the rescue potential of a magician, especially after that tinkering a while back, just completely separates him in a different category. So that is my 11 reasons as to why magician is an S tier solo cure. Remember, this encompasses bad ping and good ping, which is why I'm not putting it as a rescue character. Uh, especially with no deco debuff. Thank you very much for watching. I put a lot of effort into this, so make sure you share it. Love you all. Bye.